Welcome back. In this episode of Oxygen Not Included, we're going to be taking a look at self-powering electrolyzers. What the setup looks like, how to separate this gas, what are the details you need to pay attention to in order to come up with a system that is completely enclosed. So, from a simple standpoint, this is exactly what we have going on here. This is a working system, just to kind of show you if you don't want to get into the, all the sciencey stuff that I'll get into near the end of this video. This system has several electrolyzers and a hydrogen hood set up above it so there's a pressure switch here that will eventually trip this gas pump to turn on and that moves a little bit of hydrogen down here into a hydrogen generator which provides some power that power is then stored in some batteries that gets pulled back into the system in order to power the things like the liquid pump and the electrolyzers that make both the oxygen and the hydrogen the reason this works so well by the way is that the electrolyzer will give off 112 grams a second as far as the hydrogen is concerned it also gives off 888 grams a second of oxygen from that it's pulling one kilogram of water per second so that's kind of the dynamics of what's going on there if you look over at the power what you'll see is that the hydrogen generator is consuming 100 grams a second of hydrogen but at a rate of 800 watts is that that it, that's what it's making so when you divide the amount of power you're making by the amount of grams it takes to make that power, you end up with eight joules per gram of hydrogen. And that is joules because you no longer have the seconds on the end and a watt is joules per second. So when you look at the electrolyzer, what we see is it takes 120 watts to create 112 grams of hydrogen. So if we do some quick math on the electrolyzer here, 112 times 8 gives us 896 watts that it's creating. And then you subtract the amount it takes to create that and you end up with an excess of 776 watts. However, that's definitely not the end of the calculation because this pump up here runs at 240 watts. So it takes a little bit more power to pump that stuff down. Now, if you happen to be pumping both the oxygen and the hydrogen, you're gonna have to run a gas filter. And guess what? That takes 120 watts. Here's the other kicker. These gas pumps can only move 500 grams a second. And the total amount of gas that's being put out of these electrolyzers is 1,000 grams a second. So let's say you were to pump and filter every single gram that comes out of these electrolyzers. How much power does that take? Well, you have two pumps at 240 watts. You also have a filter at 120 watts. The electrolyzer itself takes 120 watts. And then you also have a liquid pump down here. However, this liquid pump can move 10 kilograms a second. So if you theoretically take one tenth of that, what you end up with is a total amount of power that is 744 watts, which is just under 800. So theoretically, you should be able to actually filter out every single gram of oxygen that's coming out of this electrolyzer and have it be self-sustaining. However, as you can tell, that is far less efficient than not running a gas filter and filtering out that hydrogen from oxygen without the use of a filter or a second pump. All right, so this is gonna be my first test right here. And this one is using a hydrogen hood. Now this was inspired by a comment made by Orderin over here. So, and one of the things that he did in his base here was set up several electrolyzers in an area where the hydrogen was gonna build up at the top and then used sloping tiles to kind of sort out the oxygen from the hydrogen. I've also done some previous experiments on the same sort of thing in several videos that I've done before. So this one was about separating the hydrogen from oxygen. There's also other ones where you're trying to contain it with pumps and all that fun stuff. All right, so here's what I'm going to do to test this. At the beginning of the next cycle here, I'm gonna go ahead and let this run for five cycles or so. As you can see, I have a void here at the top, and what that's doing is it's sucking in a lot of the oxygen and anything else that might get up there. Now, a little tiny bit of hydrogen has gotten past here. What I have found over my previous experiments here is that by placing these right at the top of your electrolyzer, you can get about 95% of that hydrogen up there, or maybe even more, maybe it's like 99% a very small amount would actually slip past this tile right here. And you really want to make it in a slope like this. I've experimented with it being wider, you know, three wide, four wide, and they all kind of have mixed results. This here is about as stable as anything I've tested. The real trick though is having at least five, you know, spots up. You want to be able to have a decent amount of volume that you're going to be building up here. 
this atmospheric switch is set to one and a half kilograms. So 1,500 grams is what they have that set to. And you kind of want to set that up nice and high so that oxygen doesn't accidentally trip this. So you want to make sure you're getting a lot of hydrogen in there and that it can run a decent amount as it's pumping back down. The other thing I've experimented with is changing these between gas permeable tiles and not so much permeable tiles. But as long as you have gaps that are at least two tiles wide, the gas flow seems to work pretty well. So don't get me wrong, you don't necessarily need to have this exact setup here. You can do many different things with it, but the idea is the same, right? You have a slope and that slope allows the hydrogen to collect in one spot and then oxygen has to find somewhere else to go. So this could be way at the top of your base and then your electrolyzers are way at the bottom of your base, or you can place an electrolyzer up near the top of your base and then have these hoods as well. Now another thing you want to keep in mind is that your light gases are going to flow towards the top left of your base. So if you're going to place a hood anywhere, you don't necessarily need to have all these slopes, but you're going to want to put your hydrogen collection spot at the top left of your base if you have a large like square space. For example, in this area here, I would want to put my hydrogen collection right up here on the top left. Now, <laughs> it would be a long ways for that hydrogen to get way over here, so you probably want to have more than just one. But to give you an idea of a more practical size, maybe something that big, you want to place it in the top left if you're going to only have one spot to collect it. So a couple of the things that we can observe here is that these batteries pretty much just about stay full all day long. So you could potentially run this stuff up to a couple of transformers so that the extra amount of electricity you're getting can actually run out into your base and maybe power some other equipment. For example, maybe a, a, a refrigerator or maybe some other equipment like doors. You know, they're not used that much. They don't consume that much power, but you need to power them somehow. You're gonna have a little extra with this. All right, so here are the results for this little experiment over here on the left. I created 223.78 kilograms of oxygen in a day. In duplicate terms, that's three and three quarter duplicates, so just about four. The power that was created was 154.68 kilojoules, and of that, only 23.3 on average was used to power all of the equipment right there, giving me a net of 131 kilojoules. Or if we average that out and make it into watts, that's about 219. So that should be enough to run this refrigerator. Let me go ahead and just enable that. We'll fill it with some food and we'll see if it continues to self operate even with this refrigerator there. All right, so let's take a more in depth look at what's going on here. So what we can see here is that the electrolyzer is running at 42% of its maximum capacity, therefore the hydrogen generator can only operate it at 47% of its maximum operation. The air pump gets a nice break, it nearly only runs at 9%, and then the water pump runs at 4% of its maximum amount in a single cycle. Okay, so here's some interesting results. Based on my calculations, I should be getting about 225.8 kilojoules a day. Now if we look at the reports here over the last couple of days, You'll see that the this number right here is 98.2, 167, 205, 91, 160, 181. It's definitely doing this number, but I'm never seeing anything that's anywhere close to 225. So I've been looking around, but I haven't necessarily found where that potential energy is gone. I should be getting a little bit more out of this, but I'm I'm not. That being said, this system has still continued to self-sustain quite easily, even with this refrigerator running. So these batteries, they do get low every once in a while, but then they'll get filled back up by the hydrogen generator. So this system here is nice and stable. It's, we've gone several cycles now. So let's go ahead and just turn on another electrolyzer here. So these two right next to each other, they do compete. They do cause each other to overpressurize. So I won't get just twice as much oxygen in this setup, even though I have this in this low pressure zone up here. So oxygen's really being pulled through here and all this good stuff. Um, these will compete, so I won't get 100%. So one possible explanation is that a little bit of hydrogen is finding its way out of here, then ending up getting sucked into the void. Even though there is a minute amount up here, it, there's a chance that it might just happen. So let me go ahead and close this off, and I'm going to move this void down here to the bottom right, just to kind of see what kind of a difference that makes. See if I can get that number a little bit closer to what I should be seeing as far as the theoretical maximum, which is 225.8. 
Okay, so in this experiment, our results were a little bit different. The void is a tad bit closer to the electrolyzer, so I'm getting a little bit more oxygen production. You can see 558 kilograms in a day. It's compared to 223. So, there you have it, a little bit better. The power created in a day was also a little bit higher. And then 62.7, which was the power used, was actually quite a bit higher. So if I go ahead and take this number down here and see how that works out. Uh, my theoretical maximum is still 260, which I am way off. So something's wrong here. I don't know. I guess I'm going to have to leave it to you guys to figure out what's going on there. Potentially, theory, right? Maybe sometimes the hydrogen is very small and then it's maybe not being created. I don't know, maybe it actually doesn't create hydrogen if it's not running at 100% maximum capacity. So therefore I'm getting less hydrogen. I don't know. It doesn't tell you how much hydrogen's being created in days. Only tells you oxygen. Mysteries, huh? So I think here's a good point to bring in Demon87's comment. He says, hi, I finally found a way to make the electrolyzer work at 100% capacity all the time. Maybe you could do a test on this setup. It says, basically, it's a small amount of polluted and regular water in a puddle. Check it out. Now, I have seen this sort of setup floating around on different forms for actually a while now. There's been people kind of manipulating the, the fluid dynamics in this space right here to trick this electrolyzer so that it runs constantly, a lot like what we get with the valve systems. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up and see if I can get those numbers a little bit closer to what I should be seeing based on my calculations. All right, so I have this hooked up here. And as you can tell, without any water in there, this thing does kind of bounce in and out of maximum pressure. Let me go ahead and just add a, just 200 grams of water to see what happens here. Now he was saying both polluted water and clean water, but we'll see what happens. Yes, this is still bouncing off maximum pressure with just the, the two right there. So that's not working out as well. I've also run out of power, so... Harold, you actually get a job to do. Okay, so let's see what happens when I add a little bit of dirty water to this chamber. Mmm, still bouncing off of maximum pressure. You can see in this picture here that the water is a little bit higher, so it looks like there's only one tile that's still left open. So maybe I need a little bit more water in here, a little bit more clean water. Try as I might, I can't get the liquid to work just like this. So, there's something else that's going on there that I can't seem to replicate. The other thing is that there was a patch that was just released today, and there's a ch chance that, even though they didn't mention it, that this electrolyzer could have been adjusted a little bit. I don't know. I, I know that these things exist out there, so... Maybe there's another way of doing that. I think the better thing to do, though, is to just test an enclosed system. So that's gonna be one electrolyzer, two pumps, a filter, and then see what kind of power I get out of that. Okay, so here's the setup. I've got this electrolyzer running as much as it can. It's hardwired to run. And then I have two pumps here that are going to turn on and off via a Atmos switch set at one kilogram. Those run directly into a gas filter that'll push the oxygen out to the outside and then the hydrogen will travel down here to the hydrogen generator. So in this setup right here, hydrogen cannot slip out in any direction. So it'll be interesting to see how this system compares to an open system. I know theoretically that this system here should have enough power to be self-sustaining, but I'm not 100% sure that that'll be the case. I'm gonna go ahead and disable that manual generator and let's see what happens. We can see the gas work here. It's going on. It's finding its way down to the generator little by little and the power in this battery right here is slowly declining so that's kind of interesting okay so the one thing I noticed here is that I was looking at below and I want this to be above so maybe these gas pumps were running too much maybe that's what was going on let me disable this see if it works now those atmospheric switches are really important to kind of not sucking up too much energy because no matter what you do this electrolyzer isn't going to run at maximum power unless you have some sort of magic trick there like 
uh, Demon 84 was trying to come up with. Okay, so even in this setup right here, it's not self-sustaining. So I made this chamber a little bit taller, trying to kind of balance the hydrogen level and all that good stuff. Mm, we'll see if this ever becomes self-sustaining, but I kind of doubt it. All right, Harold, you're becoming a little bit of a nuisance here with your stress. So you've been replaced by Mima. I want to see what my results here are after another five cycles on this, even though I have to run the manual generator in order to keep the system running. We'll just have to see what happens here. What I want to do is calculate how much oxygen I'm making. That is something I can actually kind of get out of this report and it should be nice and accurate. You know what? One thing I want to test here is if I disable this electrolyzer, does the oxygen generation keep going up because I have a little bit of polluted oxygen that's being generated? But no, that number is not continuing to go up. It's actually staying steady, so that is not my culprit. It was a nice thought, though. And I thought for a second there I had it figured out. All right, so starting on cycle 905, I'm going to go ahead and let this kind of run its course. Okay, so for the oxygen generation, right off the bat, we can see that we're getting more oxygen. And that's what you would expect. <laughs> Harold's trying to chase his lunch down here. Get him! Get that more... <laughs> there you go. Oh, I didn't give you any food? That's not good. Well, there you have it. Some mealwood. Harold's not having a good day, really. Oh. He's gone stupid. He, he, he no longer will harvest. Okay, so here are my results for this experiment on the left right there, which is this contained system. I was able to create, on average, 336.38 kilograms of oxygen a day. So that's enough for five and a half duplicates right there. So it's definitely a lot more, but it's come at a cost of quite a bit more power. We saw up here, this was 23.3, and then, man, that jumped up to 62.7. Running one electrolyzer, but with all this equipment, it was 210 kilojoules a day. At no point was this ever self-sustaining, though. And it looks like Harold, oh, he's, he's just, he's having a bad time down there. So if we go ahead and take this amount of oxygen here that we have, 336.38, and try to figure out just how much theoretical power, let's see what we get. What I see here is that the electrolyzer is still only running at 63% of its maximum theoretical output. So I think the game designers really got to look at this electrolyzer to see how would they can make it a little bit more practical. It seems like there's some weird things going on here. Poor Harold, he finally kicked the bucket. It's all right, you and Eli, right next to each other. And also the auto twins. Yeah. A few duplicates have been harmed in the name of science, but it's all for a good cause. Thank you for your sacrifice, Harold. It will not be in vain. So as we look at this number here, the maximum numbers that I should be getting this, as far as kilojoules a day, is 339.41. Okay, so here's my theory. For some odd reason, Something here is not being counted in the reports quite correctly. If we see here, I've made 355 uh, kilojoules in a single day right there. And I know that this system runs pretty much close to just about running out of power all the time. Mima has to work really hard to keep this system running with a manual generator. However, the amount that was used and reported as used is actually quite a bit less than what is being created, which doesn't add up. Now, I have seen some bugs in the past where if you put stuff behind like power switches, it may not necessarily count it correctly. So that is potentially where I'm seeing some discrepancy here. But if we take a look at the calculations here based on the best that I was able to say, uh, calculate, which is the amount of oxygen that I'm getting in a single day right there, which is 336.38 on average. And that's pretty close there. Those numbers don't vary that much. We can see that the number that is also being reported as created is as 332.34. Now, when I calculate this out through my little calculator here, I get 327.29. So that's that's very, very close. So just to clarify, 327.29 is how much I think the system theoretically is using. Now, not all of it is running at 100% efficiency. Potentially, there's some inefficiencies on the air pump. 
and probably some inefficiencies that's happening with that electrolyzer. As you can tell, that number is quite a bit down from 100%. So what are the takeaways for this system? Well, obviously we've seen two things based on a couple of practical tests. By just using an electrolyzer and some sort of filtering system, like a, a hydrogen hood, you can actually run the system and it is completely self-sustainable. You'll actually even get enough power out of that to run something that's maybe about 120 watts or maybe a little bit more. However, if you try to take this electrolyzer and run it through a couple of gas pumps and then gas filters and whatever that's going on there, the system is not self-sustaining, even though the numbers look like they could potentially be self-sustaining. Now, now, as far as the calculations are concerned today, they don't necessarily add up with what I'm seeing in game as much as I would have liked. But this just goes to reinforce why we should really do a setup and test and not just rely solely on the math. Things are in alpha, there's inefficiency, there may be things that are not accounted for in this calculation right here that are happening inside this game. At the end of the day, an enclosed system right here is simply not so self-sustainable. However, an open system is. At any rate, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you have found this video somewhat informative or helpful. Let me know down there in the comments section below. Thank you guys for all of your recommendations. Lately, it's been absolutely awesome, and it keeps me coming up with more ideas to make videos for you guys. So thanks for watching. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Have a great day, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brokkar.